Hello there, this is Lana Tucky, and I'm here to help you with 12.1 number 26 from the study plan, wherever that might end up in your homework. Okay, so we have statistical software and graphing calculators with advanced statistics special features. Use random number generators to create random numbers confirm, conforming to a specified distribution. Use the list of randomly generated um, numbers from 1 to 5 presented in the accompanying table. So we have over here the table, right there, ta-da. Okay, so let's figure this out. So assuming that the random number generator is generating the numbers between 1 through 5 with equally likelihood, um, equal likelihood, and that's inclusive for 1 to 5, meaning it can roll 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5, equally likely for all of them. What proportion do you expect? Well, 0.2, right? Because if you have 5, last time I looked, 1 divided by 5 was 0.2. If all five numbers are equally likely, then every single one of them should be showing up 20% of the time, right? Right. Okay, so there's your expected frequency, your relative frequency. It's 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. There are your five numbers. Cool? All right, now what you actually observe is something else entirely. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. But let me click on the icon. I'm going to copy... Um, actually, I'm going to copy that table to a clipboard. Now I can paste this in, let's see, I've got Excel right here. I can paste it there. There they are. Um, and actually, I think that'll probably be easiest. And then I'm going to click on that column. So I'm going to double or click up here. I'm going to hit data, A to Z, and it sorts it, which is so much more helpful. And then I can see how many times, if you highlight them all, see that where you highlight them all? Then down on the bottom, see where it says count? Then I have 11 ones right there. And then I can do it again for the twos. There are all the twos. I can lift up on my mouse and it says 12 twos. And then I do it for the threes, 13 threes. So I better go write this down, 11, 12, 13. I'm gonna go type it into my stack crunch. So I observed 11 ones, 12 twos, 13 threes. And then let's see how many fours. Sorry about that. Nine fours and five fives. Interesting. All right. So nine fours and f whoops, five fives. My fault. Well, how many did you expect? Well, the total here is what? How many rolls do we have for the die or, or excuse me, numbers generated here? All together, it's 50. Now you can tell it's 50 because over here on this side of the Excel column, it's 50. Also, when I highlight all of them down here, it says count 50. Right, and then I don't know if they said it in the problem anywhere, but I'll double check. No, nope, it didn't say it anywhere, but you have five rows times 10 columns. Five times 10 is 50. Okay, so one way or another, you're getting 50. So then how does that help you? Well, if you know it should be 0 0.2 for each one of them, and you know you have 50, right? This is your P and this is your N. So to figure out your expected, expected value, you multiply n times p. That's what we learned in the binomial section back in 6.2. You multiply n times p and you get 10. So that's what you expected to roll. You expect to roll 10 one, 10 twos, 10 threes, and so on. All right, so let me go put that in here. So we expected 10, 10, 10, 10. Obviously, we're a little off here with the fives. We'll see if that's en off enough to matter to us, but we'll find that out later. That's sort of what we're trying to test. Was it so off there that we think that we don't have um, true uniformity, true equally balanced numbers. So there's the point two part. And then what else do they want? Expected counts. We figured all of those, right? And then we're going to run the hypothesis test. So it's going to be a chi-square goodness of fit test. And they claim it's going to be 0 0.406 when we come up with it. Let's find out, shall we? So I'm going to go to stat crunch. I'm going to hit stat. I'm going to hit goodness of fit. It's a chi-square test. I have observed and observed, obviously. And expected, you actually can choose either relative frequency or expected frequencies. It shouldn't matter which one you pick. And there you go, 0 0.406, right there. Just like they said it would be. Done. Dollars to that, right? Um, in case you're interested, right, there are all your expected frequencies. Your degrees of freedom is four because there were five categories, right? You had N is 50 because you had 50 total there. And your chi-square um, value is 4, so don't worry about that. And your p-value is 0.406. Done.
All right, I hope that helps you with that problem. I don't think there was anything else to do there other than to um, finish it out. Oh, one thing to notice about the null and alternative, uniformly distributed, remember that's, oh, wow, we learned that back in chapter two. Uniform means that everything's equally likely. So you think think of a die. When you roll a, a, like a six-sided die for like Monopoly, you expect each side to occur an equal number of times. Now is it gonna be perfect? No, but you know, it should be close. So if we look back at our data, we thought we were going to get 10 of each of these. And we see that we were a little bit low here on the fives, but it wasn't low enough because your p-value is 0.406. So obviously this is still okay, right? You don't have enough here to reject that it's following a uniform distribution like this. All right, I'll see you back here for more videos.